Good afternoon all. I'm playing with the uh, Buck Converter unit again. This is part of my Muppet 2 project. And uh, what I've been doing recently is putting one of these little OLED meters on here. But this one has the watt meter software. So this is measuring uh, power consumed in the output side of the circuit. You can see that the inductor uh, runs into the watt meter and then that goes out and runs down through the lamp. Now I really wanted to put this uh, meter down in the low side of the circuit because I've got this little link wire here, but you can't do that when you're using this as a watt meter. You have to measure current in the high side of the circuit so that it can also measure voltage um, across the load here. You need an additional grounding wire to uh, reference ground on the Arduino, which is the same as ground on the INA219, reference that down to ground in your circuit. So yes, this has had to go on the high side. Um, now this is all in preparation for measuring buck converter efficiency, because we do that by measuring input watts and output watts. And I've got two of these meters, so I can have another one on the input side, except that I can't because I think I've blown this one up. And that happened when I had the genius idea that rather than using a 9 volt battery, which is what this is, to power this little watt meter, I thought, well, why not um, plug this cable in here and actually power it from 12 volts, set this power supply here to 12 volts on the input and power the watt meter from 12 volts. And uh, that would have the added benefit that ground is connected through to ground on my circuit. I wouldn't need this extra ground referencing wire. But that wasn't a brilliant idea because on both of these units, the little regulator, uh, this chip here on the back of the Arduino Pro Mini got very hot. And on this one, the whole thing has failed. Now, I don't know what the failure mode of these regulators is, um, but if it failed in such a way that it put 12 volts through onto the 80 mega 328p, also onto the INA219 chip and also onto the OLED. Well, then it's blown everything uh, in this little sandwich up. So why did this happen? Well, on the back of this Arduino, this is one that blew up. We have a regulator that has the marking S8PF. So what is an S8PF? So it would appear from a quick S8PF regulator uh, search on Google that this is an LM2936 ultra low quiescent current LDO voltage regulator with a V in range of 5.5 volts to 40 volts. So why did my 12 volts blow that regulator up if that is indeed what's happened? Well, it seems that it has an input voltage range of 5.5 volts to 40 volts, but um, it only has a 50 milliamp output and I don't know how much current that OLED takes, but it may be most or all of that, 50 milliamps. That's not a particularly high current. So maybe it died due to overcurrent rather than over voltage. The regulator on the board that survived is this. It's a Mic 5205, and this is a 150 milliamp low noise LDO regulator. So maybe the reason this one survived and the other one didn't is simply the uh, current rating specification. So it does look like you have to be a little bit careful with these Arduino Pro Minis because there are numerous different regulators uh, you can get on these things and this one would appear to be 50 milliamps and that one would appear to be 150 milliamps. I mean really in terms of overheating it's down to watts isn't it? So it's the voltage drop across the regulator uh, multiplied by the current flowing through it. But then maybe this just has very thin fusible connections inside and they blow at or around 50 milliamps. I don't know. But anyway, this might have died. Now, it's not a huge problem at the moment because I can read watts on my watt meter. Let's actually plug that in and switch it on by partly closing that battery box. So that's reading uh, zero watts by measuring the voltage um, across this lamp and the current flowing through it in effect. But this power supply can also show power. It puts a little P symbol here 
And so this can also show the watts flowing out of the power supply. So I can actually measure watts into the buck converter and watts out. So I don't need this immediately. So I can actually carry on with my experiment. So let's put some power onto this circuit um, from my 12 volts. Actually, it's 13.7, which is pretty reasonable uh, into this power supply. So that's on That's set to 12 volts, but I can monitor current. I can also look at total uh, accumulated or consumed charge. And this is a dodgy switch, but I can also look at watts. And we do have a very good correlation between the watts coming out of this power supply. Now you've got to bear in mind that this buck converter is not bucking at the moment. It's switched on permanently. Um, I've just put these two wire links which go to gate and source of the MOSFET directly across nine volts of the battery. So this MOSFET is turned on permanently. It has a low on resistance. The inductor is just working as a piece of wire. This also has a, a very low resistance. So really we just have a straight path from the power supply through to the bulb. So we're measuring uh, 4.03 watts coming out of the power supply and we're measuring 4.03 or sometimes 4.04 watts um, being dissipated in that lamp. Um, and in case you're wondering what this diode is doing at the moment, well nothing because it's reverse biased. It's got a positive voltage on the cathode so it's just uh, not doing anything, it's not conducting at all. Now I think the fact that this watt meter correlates with this watt meter uh, might be partly due to luck because I'm not entirely sure that the code I've written for this watt meter is entirely correct and that's because the Arduino library for the INA219 is a little bit confusing. So here's my code for the INA219 based watt meter and I've got these sections, uh, these lines of code down here at the bottom, which I took directly out of um, Adafruit's uh, example. Uh, but I've put that the load voltage equals the bus voltage. This bus voltage is rather confusing in my opinion, minus the shunt voltage, because you'd think that if you're measuring current, You've got a supply voltage, which I assume is what this bus voltage is. You subtract a small amount of voltage that's lost across the current sense resistor, the shunt, and that gives you the voltage across the load, and that the load voltage would be smaller than the bus voltage. That's why I've subtracted the shunt voltage, but that's not what Adafruit do themselves. Um, if I go to File, Examples, come right down to the bottom, and go to the Adafruit INA219 get current sketch. Let's bring that one in and maximize it. I minimized it, maximize it. You can see here that they've got the load voltage equals the bus voltage plus the shunt voltage divided by a thousand. So what are they saying? That the load voltage is actually higher than the bus voltage. And what exactly is this bus voltage? I think I'm going to have to look at the INA219 datasheet. So this is the datasheet for the INA219 bidirectional current and power monitor with I squared C interface. It's a current shunt and power monitor with I squared C compatible interface. The device monitors both shunt voltage drop and bus supply voltage. So it's the bus voltage, the supply voltage, and it's got here the V in plus and V in minus connections. Um, now you have to put the higher uh, voltage on the V in plus and the lower voltage in on V in minus in order to get positive current measurements. So for me, V in plus is the supply and V in minus is the load. There's a low value resistor across these two connections. Um, it does show that better further down. So let me scroll down past all this stuff. Um, yeah, so there's a diagram here which shows uh, feature description. This is a, a sort of typical application. Here's V in plus and V in minus. Here's the shunt resistance, uh, which is a low value resistor. Supply is here on the left, that goes to V in plus, And load is here on the right, that goes to V in minus. So what's interesting here is in the pin configuration and functions 
because here um, we've got the in plus pin, that's the positive differential shunt voltage, connect to the positive side of the shunt resistor. In minus is the negative differential shunt voltage, connect to the negative side of the shunt resistor. But then there's this, bus voltage is measured from this pin to ground. So actually bus voltage is measured from the in minus pin to ground. So in order to get a positive current reading, we want um, the higher voltage on the V in plus pin, the lower voltage, in other words, the load on the V in minus, but this is the bus voltage. So actually, according to this data sheet, the load voltage is the bus voltage. They're one and the same thing. And that's not what it seems that the Adafruit library has assumed uh, in their code. So it's all a bit misleading, really. So here in Adafruit's example code, they've got bus voltage, which we now know is the load voltage, assuming you put the load on the V in minus pin. Um, but they've said that the load voltage is the bus voltage plus the shunt voltage, but the bus voltage is the load voltage. So I think really this is a case of just misnaming this parameter, load voltage. I think this should be supply voltage. Because if you add the bus voltage, which is the load voltage, to the shunt voltage, what you get is the voltage on the positive side of the uh, shunt resistor, and that's the supply voltage. So I think this shouldn't be called load voltage, this should be called supply voltage. And in fact, I don't need to do a calculation to calculate load voltage, because load voltage is bus voltage. So let's just make sure I've got this right. We've got supply. Um, going through the shunt resistance to the load. Supply is on the V in plus pin, and the load is on the V in minus pin. Now in that table, which I've cut out separately, it says in minus is bus voltage is measured from this pin to ground. So going back to here, bus voltage is here, V in minus. This is bus voltage, it's load voltage, load voltage is bus voltage. Let me write that in. Uh, right, I've written it in there. Load voltage is bus voltage. And that's what I want to measure here. I want to measure um, the voltage across my load, which is this lamp. And so I want to measure the voltage at this pin, which is V in minus, as opposed to the pin at the top, which is V in plus. So I, I'm going to change my code, which unfortunately will probably result in a higher number here, and then that won't quite match my power supply down here, but I want to get this right. I want to be measuring the proper load voltage. So let's go back to the code. So in my code down here, um, power is not load voltage times current milliamps. Well, it is the load voltage, but not this uh, variable. It's actually just bus voltage. So I don't need to calculate load voltage as something else. So I'm going to comment that one out. And instead of load voltage here, I'm going to put this back to bus voltage. So it's simply the bus voltage, which we know is the load voltage, times the current in milliamps divided by a thousand to get power in watts. So let's compile and upload that. Oh, that's going to be a bit tricky. Uh, that's going to be a bit tricky. I should probably turn off that power supply. I should probably remove nine volts from this module. I also have to take off that grounding pin and I've got to attach my little uh, USB to serial converter onto the Arduino Pro Mini to put the new code in there. Right, so I've just um, uploaded the new code. So let's put nine volts onto there. Oops, let's just jam that down a bit. Uh, reconnect this ground referencing pin and switch on the power supply, reposition the camera so that we can see power on here, which is P, if I, oh yeah. <laughs> the switch is a bit dodgy, but anyway. Um, yeah, so now unfortunately it's reading a bit high because I'd actually put in that the load voltage was the bus voltage minus the shunt voltage because I thought that the, yes, I didn't think it was this way around. So there is a bit of a mismatch now because I'm reading the bus voltage directly as the load voltage. This is the voltage on the V minus input pin. And now I don't have quite such a good correlation between, between oops, why has that gone off? 
my watt meter and the power measurement on this power supply. Uh, right, flat battery it would seem, serves me right I suppose for buying three packs of cheap zinc chloride batteries from the pound shop, but that should work with a new one in there. Uh, that's because the ground wire is missing, so it's got no voltage reference information. So there we are, 4.02 watts measured on the power supply, a little bit higher, which can't be right, measured on the load, but they're not a million miles apart. So there we are, um, mishaps with roasting of the regulators on the Arduino Pro Minis and the sort of strange anomalies in the Adafruit Arduino code for the INA219 now all sorted. So now I can move on to the next stage where I want to measure the uh, input power and output power in the buck regulator when it's bucking. It isn't of course at the moment, it's just switched on permanently um, to get some efficiency figures for this circuit. But uh, for today, I'm happy. Cheerio.